Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we got six new fishing hacks for you. So, don't go anywhere. Today, we got six new fishing hacks that are awesome little DIYs, and hopefully, they're gonna up your fishing game. And speaking of DIYs, if you've never been on my channel before, check out my channel page because I got a lot of DIYs that can help save you some money and I guarantee you, you'll find something you like on it. And if you do, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and then you can watch them. And in case you don't know, subscribing is totally free. Well, let's quit wasting time and let's get into them. Fishing hack number one. Now, Mr. Mike Richards left a comment on my page about a month ago, and he said that he would like an idea for making some real covers and some lure covers. Today, we're gonna make some lure covers. I just made a video a couple weeks ago about how to make real covers really, really cheap, and they turned out nice, so go check those out. If you don't know what lure wraps are, they're just covers these are a Bass Pro Shop brand, and they cost $6 a piece. And you wrap them around your lure, and they stop your treble hooks from getting hung on everything. Well, we're fixing to make our own, and all we need is a roll of duct tape. You can use cloth if you want, but duct tape is tough, and it's really cheap. And I got the pretty green color. And you're going to need some sticky back Velcro. This sticky back Velcro is 24 inches long and it's three quarter inches wide. So if we take one of our lure covers and open it up, it measures seven inches across and six inches this way. So the first thing we need to do is make the cover part. And that's what the duct tape's for. We're gonna lay out our duct tape, sticky side up. We're gonna keep putting strips down and we're gonna stick them to their self. Once we get a big enough sheet of duct tape stuck together that's at least seven by six, we're gonna take duct tape and we're gonna put it in the opposite direction and stick it sticky side to sticky side. When we get it all covered, we'll have a great big piece. Then we're gonna cut that piece down to size, seven inches by six inches, just like our store-bought real covers. Now we got a little duct tape piece of cloth ready. And next, we're gonna put the Velcro on. Make sure you didn't get any dirt on it when you was cutting it, because we want our Velcro to stick good. You just wanna fold this in half. After you fold it and put a crease down the center, that'll give you your center line. And one side of this, we're gonna put one kind of Velcro. On the other side of this, we're gonna put the other kind of Velcro. So there you have it. You got a little cover just like the ones they sell in the store except for you ain't even got a dollar in yours and it actually works pretty good let's try it out now i like these little bluegill baits and they're broken and when they swim they look like a real fish so let's try our little lure wrap with this my wife caught her personal best striper from a kayak with one of these little baits right here. Fishing hack number two. Okay, this next DIY, all you're gonna need is a set of Sharpies. This hack is basically about coloring your lures. If you buy all white lures and you're fishing, now white's one of my favorite colors to fish with, but if you're out there and you're not catching nothing, you can just take a Sharpie and color your lure. Like if you're using one of these curly tail grubs, they're just white. Well, you could color that thing uh, a pretty green, like almost a chartreuse color. You just take your Sharpie and your lure and color it. Take your time, do as good or as bad a job as you want to because the fish are still gonna go after the color more than the realism of the lure. So you got one of these big swim baits and you just wish that thing was orange. All you gotta do, get your orange Sharpie and color the thing orange. And now you got you an orange lure. I love these uh, super flukes, the swimming kind and the regular kind. 
I like to buy the ice white because they work really good. But if you want this thing chartreuse, get out your pen and go to work. Color that thing up. And when you're done, you got your chartreuse lure. Now I got some water and we're gonna drop these in there for about 10 minutes. And we're gonna see if this ink stays on good. Now after they soak for 10 minutes, we'll take them out and see if it washes off. Now the soft plastic ones are not as easy to clean off after they've been colored. But let's say you color something hard like a bucktail jig, or look, it's a blue back heron. Get it, I, Never mind. But let's say you color something hard like this. You can just take some denatured alcohol or regular rubbing alcohol, and you can wipe the color back off of it and then it's ready to recolor again. Now these lures have been in there for about 10 minutes and I can already tell the water's not discolored or anything. So, so I can tell it's not gonna wash off of these. Yeah, there's no color coming off. So that's a pretty good idea. If you like using a lot of different colors, you can just make your own lures. And all you need is some white lures and a pack of Sharpies. This hack was given to me by a subscriber named Greg W. He said he does this and I wanted to try it. And it's pretty cool that it don't wash off, but you can wipe it off with rubbing alcohol. Fishing hack number three. Now this next hack is exactly what it's called. It's a hack. This is a jewelry making box. It's basically one big Plano box with a bunch of these tiny little boxes in it. Some of my boxes are missing. I think they're in my boat. I like the crappy fish, bass fish, catfish, you name it. Well, I like to keep a crappy box with me on my boat. And this box is tiny. You can see my hand beside of it. There is room to organize anything for crappy fishing in here. I mean, I've got marabou jigs about any color you could want. I keep jigs that I hand tie in here. Then we got different size jig heads, all different size jig heads that we can use for crappy fishing. I keep soft plastics for the jig heads and I even keep split shots in here and hooks for minnow fishing. It's a cool little box. I got it at one of the craft stores. I think it was Hobby Lobby. All it is is a jewelry making kit, and it's for people that make jewelry to keep their beads and different little claw hooks and claw clasps or whatever you call them, man. But it makes an awesome little fishing box. Hack number four. All right, this is a piece of styrofoam, and it kind of reminds you of a pool noodle. It just came in a box of something I bought. Might have been Christmas. But I put it up and I thought I'll use this for something. These are pencil boxes. You just put pencils in them. And they cost a dollar, 50 cents, something like that. Have you ever looked up what a fly box costs? It's just a little small box that you put flies in. And you don't have to just use them for flies. I buy them and use them for crappy fishing as well to put my crappy jigs in. Well, on this hack, I got to thinking we could take a pencil box and turn it into a fly box that's only going to cost you about a dollar or 50 cents. I took the piece of styrofoam and luckily I have a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could use a razor blade to do this part. But I cut it up into pieces that'll fit into my box. And after I get them all cut the right size, then I'm going to take some kind of really good glue this is just a Scotch High Performance Repair Glue. It's kind of like super glue, but it's more like a gel. And we're going to glue in our styrofoam pieces. I'm gluing some in the bottom, and I'm gluing some into the top. But after you get all your pieces glued together, and after you get through gluing all that foam in, you turn a pencil box into a jig holder. <laughs> Fishing hack number five. Okay, on this hack, I had a subscriber a while back and he wanted to know how he could paint 
These floats, the Michael Mike, these floats. He said he liked these better because they were much brighter and easier to see. These are red, but you get three in a pack. A pack of these are a little over a dollar, and a pack of these are like almost four dollars, I think. But you only get two of these, you get three of these. So basically, these Mr. Crappy floats are about four times higher than the cheap brand Walmart floats. But they're pretty much the same thing. Now when it comes to paint and styrofoam, this is what happens when you paint styrofoam. It basically melts it. And most of it's because of the acetone that's in the spray paint. So I got to thinking, I could probably use Plasti Dip. Plasti Dip's like a rubber, right? Well, I used Plasti Dip and it was even worse. I'm sure they make a, some kind of craft spray paint that won't hurt Styrofoam. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm sure there is one. But something interesting I found out, I painted a pool noodle and it didn't hurt it at all. But a pool noodle is made from a different type of foam than a peg float. A peg float's made from styrofoam. A while back I had an idea that I tried. I took some shrink tubing and I put it over a peg float and I shrunk it down and it made it really, really tough. It's, I mean, this thing's like hard as wood. Then I got some clear shrink tubing. And it turned out really good, but it's not perfect because it's hard to do. Because when you use heat to melt your shrink tubing, you can also melt your foam if you're not careful. If you want to try to do this, I mean, it's possible. I did it pretty good on a couple. I used some uh, one inch shrink tube, slide it over it, shrink it down. Cutting it to length is the hard part. Then I found these shrink wrap bags and I cut me some of it, wrapped it around the float and taped it and then shrunk it on it. And it turned out pretty good but it's really thin. It's not going to do a lot as far as protecting it, but you could do this and paint it. Basically what this is, it's a heat shrink made for baskets, like Easter baskets or gift baskets. I got it at Hobby Lobby, and it's the same thing they use to shrink wrap like fishing line and different things. It works okay. It's nowhere near as thick as the heat shrink tube though. Peg floats come coated. The inside's white. So I got to thinking to myself, what if this coating will protect it and I can paint it? So I tried it and it worked pretty dang good. It didn't hurt the peg float at all. I sprayed this one blue, but I just wanted to try it. So basically what I'm gonna do on this hack is I'm gonna try to paint these to make them a bright color like these. So you can get these for a quarter of the price and paint them yourself because one of my subscribers asked. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm taking my float, I'm gonna take each end off because I don't wanna get paint in the part that moves. After I get the ends taped off, I spray painted it. And we're gonna give it a second and see how it turns out. Make sure it's not gonna melt or whatever. Now you can also use craft paint. I got some craft paint that came from Walmart. It's called Real Yellow. And it's a gloss acrylic paint. It dries quick, cleans up easy, and it don't melt foam, I know for a fact. First set of planer boards I ever made, I used regular styrofoam and I used craft paint on them. So I already know that craft paint won't melt styrofoam. So you could do it this way as well. So they're not exactly the same. You could paint it two-tone, I guess, if you wanted. But you want to know how to paint it? That's how you can paint it. You can spray paint these things. And they don't melt. So there you have it. Six fishing hacks that'll help you up your fishing game, hopefully. Don't forget, if you didn't yet, click subscribe. And if you're really interested in DIYs, I also have a Facebook page, and it's called All Things Fishing DIYs. Go over and join it. That page is basically for my subscribers to show their DIYs they make, and we help each other. I appreciate you watching, guys, 
and I'll see you on the next build.